What's happening? We're trying something new out in the driveway. Never done one of these before, but I have an extra router now, thanks to Comcast, my internet service provider. Not a plug for them because my service is kind of slow. I'm actually going to gripe about Comcast, but they did make this possible because they decided that my old modem was slow and they'd give me a new modem, and that new modem included a Wi Fi router, which gave me an extra Wi Fi router. Now, last summer, I'd run a wire out to the garage, but I never really streamed much. I think a couple times. Now I've got this extra Wi-Fi router, my old one. Got it out here in the garage, and uh, we're going to try streaming a little bit. Light's a little iffy. Sound might be a little iffy because it always gets loud with all the critters and birds and bugs and stuff out in the field. But uh, should be good. Let's just give this a roll. The topic is, what is the best cheap used car you can buy that gets great gas mileage? And my number one, we'll start with this and we're going to come back to it, is the Honda Civic. Because there are so many of them. They're so inexpensive to buy. They're inexpensive to fix. You can't beat plentiful. And when parts are as cheap as they are, you used to have a dented fender or something that's bad, the bumper. You can pick that stuff up for for just like beans. I mean, you don't have to pay much at all. So we're going to start with that, but really we're going to we're going to come back to it where this this whole idea I had for for the Ain't Fueling series, where is it? Yeah, am I, the Ain't Fueling series. It's about cheap cars. It's about making old cheap cars uh, more fun to drive, cooler, and increasing your fuel economy. Number one car that I wanted to use in the beginning was a Volkswagen TDI a Golf or a Jetta between 2000 and 2005. That was my goal, but the problem was those things are just golden. People hold on to them forever. You can get hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of thousands of miles out of them. But the prices are really high. You look at, at a, a TDI, that vintage, and still it's going to be really pricey. So I ended up not going with, with the Golf TDI. You can do 50 miles per gallon. Out of, out of a golf or jet on the highway, no problem at all. They're fun to drive. You, If you do that, you want to go for the manual because the automatics can be problematic and expensive to fix. So talking about cheap cars, you don't want an expensive automatic nightmare. TDI, go manual if you can find one. And the manuals will demand a higher cost. Number two, people always think, ooh, you want a fuel-efficient car, you got to go for Prius, a Toyota Prius. If you go for an older Prius, one that's you know from you know 2000 something early on, you might be just getting into issues that you don't want to deal with. Yeah, it's going to get great gas mileage, but that battery pack, should it need to be replaced, will cost you thousands of dollars. You can sometimes fix the battery packs, and there are places now that specialize in fixing Prius packs, but if it needs replacement, thousands. So now your cheap used car is no longer cheap. It's fuel efficient, but it's not cheap anymore. So the Prius, if you want something that's a car, it's not about exciting driving, that's not engaging like a TDI manual or, or a Civic manual, Prius is fuel efficient and it can save you some money. Talking about the fuel in your tank. You want to consider a hybrid first if you do a lot of stop and go driving because that's where they're most valuable. The next Toyota on the list is the Corolla. The Toyota has sold 9 jillion Corollas. So again, like the Civic, very plentiful. Don't mind that airplane. We're right under the uh, approach path to Newark. Anyway, the, the Corolla, lots of them out there. They last forever. Parts are inexpensive. Fuel economy is not quite as high as the Civic is. Certainly this HX. But absolutely worth considering. Now, I'm looking to see if there are any folks watching live or if there are any comments. And, you know, I don't think YouTube is really working the way it used to with these live hangouts because I'm not seeing anyone live. And uh, the control room, this fancy control room, there's nothing going on there. I don't know. Oh, don't mind the train. There's a train on the other side of town that goes through. You can hear the whistle. 
So we've talked about the Volkswagen TDIs. We've talked about the Toyota Prius. We've talked about the Toyota Corolla. Talked a little bit about the Civic. And uh, what else should we consider? Well, General Motors has done some stuff over the years that's been fairly fuel efficient. The Pontiac G5, which is, uh, what's the equivalent of that? The, the Cobalt? I can't remember right now. I had a G5 like in 2009. There was a special fuel economy version that did really well. So here's a, a link to it over here. You want to check that one out. If you find one of those inexpensively, if you find one of those that are, that's uh, well-priced and it's inexpensive, you might want to consider, you know, I, a lot of people just kind of write off those older GM cars, certainly from the um, divisions that are gone. Oh, the divisions that are gone, like Saturn. So Saturn SL1s, really fuel efficient. The SL1s, the SL2s, you can get them dirt cheap. You know, you may have some maintenance issues keeping them running, but they're cheap. Cheap to keep? Nah, that I can't say, but cheap to buy for sure. What am I missing here? Nissans? You would consider the Sentra, possibly the Altima. Four-cylinder, manual, definitely my preference. With any of these manuals, always my preference. With older cars, manuals were usually more fuel efficient than automatics. Newer cars, automatics have really come up in technology, and you can sometimes get better fuel economy now, nowadays in automatic. But we're talking about cheap used cars. Stick with a manual if you can because they may be less expensive to buy and less expensive to fix when something breaks. Yeah, you're going to have that clutch replacement maybe. And uh, you will be able to squeak more miles out of it because it's just easier to play, play games. Ooh, what did we miss? Ooh, here's one that you might overlook, the Ford Focus. Ford Focus early on was this exceptional world car. We got very similar model to what they had all around the, the world. Good, solid choice. Between 2008 and 2011, we kind of had this American Focus, which was not as great as the previous model, but... Pretty fuel efficient. We've got one here, and, and it can haul down highway mileage well into the 30s. Good choice because it's inexpensive to buy, inexpensive to fix, fairly reliable, and people just aren't crazy about them, so there's not a lot of demand for it. When you're looking for a cheap car, it's cheap because there are lots of them out there, and people aren't enthusiastic about it. So people get enthusiastic about things like w, the WRX and the Evo because they didn't make many of them and they're exceptional cars. Now the price goes way, way up when they get used. But something like an old Civic like this, you can buy a Civic of this vintage. This is a 99 for $1,000, $2,000, still in pretty good shape. I paid too much for this HX, but I did go the extra couple hundred dollars because it was in really good shape. It wasn't rusty, which is a big issue. And that's a huge consideration when you go to look for your cheap used car if it has a dent in the fender that's no big deal to fix if the bumper has a crack that's no big deal to fix but if you've got rust that's a problem that you just don't want to fix it's a pain in the neck you can deal with rust on a old classic car something that really is going to have value but you don't want to deal with rust in a in a beater and when you get right down to it that's what these are these are beaters there's no panache. There's no esteem in a Civic. It just gets great fuel economy. This one, the HX, built between, two, let's see, 1996 and 2005. It seems like the 96 to 2000s are the most common. Then there's the model change from 2001 to 2005. There aren't that many HXs, so you would go for one of the other, um, other models. So it is slightly less fuel efficient, but more common. The engine is this, and this one is a, uh, boy, what's the number? D16Y5 or something like that. i got to go and look the, look the number up. I can't remember it all out of, out of my head. But the numbers that I can pull out of this car are, are pretty remarkable. You know, it was originally rated when it came out at 44 Highway in 1999. In 2008, the EPA revised the ratings. Like they did this retroactive thing. So they knocked it down to 38 miles per gallon highway. And they did so for a bunch of different reasons. One of the primary reasons is highway speed. Back in the early days, you um, 
you had 55 mile per hour speed limits, you know, like in, in lots of places. So the speed that you travel at has a huge bearing on, on the amount of fuel efficiency that you can squeak out of the engine. So at 55, this is going to get, you know, this much mileage, but at 65, it's going to be down here. At 75, it's going to be down here. It's like that with pretty much any car. It's just the way it works. So right now, if you go to fueleconomy.gov, this car is rated at 38 highway and in my highway driving right now, the way it's sitting, I'm, uh, I don't know, at 50, I can do 50 miles per gallon. But you can't do 50 on a 65 mile per hour road. So around 60, you know, a little bit over 60, um, I'm in the 45 mile per gallon range. I'm hoping to get it up closer to, to 50. But it's really tough because there's some aerodynamic challenges that I, that I need to fix. Hey, it's cool. It looks like people are actually discovering this and popping in. And I'm trying to check out the, uh, the comment thread. It doesn't look like it's showing up. And I can't see. Uh, let's see. Over on Google Plus, there's nobody chatting on Google Plus. On YouTube, I can't tell if anyone's asking any questions. I'm going to go back here. Th there's a control room. There's this control room setting for these, these live YouTube streams. And it's just a little, it's a little weird, the live control room. Right now, it looks like there's about six or seven people on. But the comments just aren't showing up. So I would like to uh, respond to comments, but I don't see anything popping in right now, which is weird. So you could try maybe going to the, uh, to the Google Plus page to pop comments in, into the group chat over on Google Plus, and if that shows up, that's cool. And I'm definitely into answering any uh, any questions if we can get this thing to work. I'm not sure why it is. Let me go to the info and settings page. Kind of getting away from the topic here, but we'll blame it on, on YouTube or my ineptness on, on setting this up. So best cheap used cars with great gas mileage. My first choice is the Honda Civic. If you got a little bit of money and you're so inclined, uh, the Volkswagen TDIs are awesome. You also have the ability to run biodiesel in those, so uh, you may have different options of, of fueling up with that. You want to go for the 2001 to 2005s because after that, you're a little more restricted on the on the type of fuel that you can use, the type of biodiesel fuel. The Prius, marvelous transportation device, very fuel efficient. Not that exciting to drive, and uh, and and also the big consideration is the cost of the battery pack. Should it need replacement, when it needs replacement, and eventually it will. You hope that it's not while you're the time while you're owning it, <laughs> right? You hope that you're not gonna you're not gonna get stuck with that. But stuff happens, and you and you never know. I'm just, I can't get this to work. I can't get the comments to work. This is really kind of making me, kind of making me nuts. But YouTube is what it is. You could, or here's the other thing. You, if you're on Twitter, you could hit me with a question on Twitter. And I'm going to go to Twitter right now. Hit me with a question on Twitter if you're on Twitter, and, I'll, and I can get, get back to that. I'm trying to think about other used cars that you might consider. You know, you sticking with the the large, um, you know, the largest manufacturers is a, is a good thing. And oh, here's another one. Here's another one to throw out there. If you're looking for something that's a little bit larger and gets decent fuel economy, the Hyundai Sonata, previous previous generation. So I had a 2009 that I tested two summers ago. And I was able to uh, get into the 30s with that on the on the highway. I got to pull my logs out, but it did really well. It was actually quite aerodynamic for the time for for what it was, and I was surprised at how much higher I was able to to push that. With any vehicles, when you do maintenance, you want to consider using low rolling resistance tires when it's time to change the tires, and you want to use a high mileage full synthetic in the crankcase when you do your oil changes these are each going to give you just a tiny bit more and it's all about incremental changes to, to
to get a little bit more um, a little more mileage out of them save a couple bucks every every month but I found that it's worth doing not having the peace of mind with a great engine oil is a great thing and when it comes to the tires if you go for a low rolling resistance tire with a long tread life Flambeau is rolling on Michelin Defenders. They're a 90,000 mile tire. Now I've put almost 10,000 miles on these. Hopefully, knock wood, I'll never need to put another set of tires on, on this car. 90,000 mile tire, you pay a little bit more for the Michelin, but it's worth it. In this size, I forget what the exact size of the 14 inch tire is on this, but there aren't that many choices for low rolling distance. I was really glad that that Michelin was there with the Defender, but um, I think was there a there might be a Bridgestone. It's not huge. The great thing about having a, a car that's extremely popular, like the Corolla is, let's say, um, or the Civic, is that you'll have more choices for tires. But the older it is, and if they're smaller tires, smaller wheels, you're not going to have as as many. So the the Ford Focus, our 2008 Ford Focus, there are a bunch of different choices, and one of the ones I thought about using on that is a, a Falcon Eco Run low rolling resistance tire. But that's a summer tire, and might make a change to that if we keep this Focus. I might make a change to that this summer, and I want to try and keep track. It's really hard to know how how much more mileage you're getting with a tire change because when you first get that low rolling resistance tire, it needs to get broken in. It needs to get worn down a little bit so it optimizes its efficiency when it's brand new it's not it's not as fuel efficient as it will be down the road once it's broken in so i'm trying to think if i have missed any anything else if you have thoughts definitely throw them into the into the comment thread once this once it's posted i gotta apologize uh, for not being able to respond to any comments if you're if you're putting up there now but I'm just not getting anything from YouTube and it's kind of driving me nuts because I thought well we're gonna be able to do a live do a live thing and get some feedback but it's not working that's it for now I'm gonna take a ride in Slambo and go pick up some new supplies you know what I'm gonna do I'm, I'll can I show you some of the stuff I'm doing here hold on I'm gonna, I'll go walk over I'll go walk over to the uh, I'll walk over to the car and see if I can show you some stuff here. So, if you can see, we're pointing backwards. I've done some stuff down at the bottom, right? Some little skirt stuff. And right now, right now, I'm working on. Uh, boy, it's tough to point the camera. I'm working on some stuff up here. In the wheel well, I don't know if you can see how well you can see that. But the idea is that I want to smooth out the bumpers, so I'm fooling around with tape, doing some crazy stuff. I don't know. Oh, hey, wait, this could work. So yeah, if I can one hand it. So where is it? Right here. Right there. Right in here, I'm doing work in here. We'll see. I think there's some benefit right now that I'm seeing some better numbers. I just keep testing, 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 and uh, I haven't posted a 50 mile per gallon tank yet, but it's only a matter of time, and if I can't do it, I don't know. <laughs> anyway, thanks for watching. I gotta uh, get some stuff to spark up the grill. And yeah, there's my, there's my that was my daily driver. I just kind of parked it. I don't drive her that much anymore. She needs to set of tires. Catch you down the road. Oh, and thanks for watching.